I am a playwright based in Dallas, Texas. Hi, my name is Jonathan Norton. I am a playwright based in Dallas, Texas, uh, and I'm extremely appreciative uh, of uh, Miss Regina Taylor uh, for creating this opportunity uh, for dialogue and conversation uh, with one of my mentors, uh, the amazing Miss Vicky Meek. And I would just like to take this moment um, to allow Vicky to uh, introduce herself to us. Okay, well, I'm Vicki Meek, and like Jonathan, I am located here in Dallas, Texas, in occupied land of the Choctaw, Caddo, and Wichita uh, Native Americans, indigenous folks. Um, and like Jonathan, I'm also very appreciative that Regina Taylor has taken this project on because I think it's one that is timely and also uh, necessary. Um, we are at a crossroads, and we're going to either take one road or the other when it comes to our creativity or um, we're going to uh, perish. So I think we're, I think we're gonna all step up and take the road to uh, sustainability. At this point, we, we technically have no other choice. I <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we can choose to do nothing, which, right. you know, that's been done before. And, and some have. It has not necessarily netted much of anything, but you know it's been done before. There have been plenty of artists who've chosen to not go down that road of resistance, and um, and so you know we're not those two, but right. there certainly have been artists who've made who've made that choice. Right. And when you uh, bring up the that idea of going down that road of of resistance, mm -hmm. um, that makes me think of. Um, uh, the foot soldiers and trailblazers uh, within our community uh, presently and those uh, who are no longer with us, uh, who we hold incredibly dear. And I was just wondering if we could maybe um, take a moment um, to, to share about um, their impact in our lives and in our practice uh, and also uh, how we um, understand activism uh, and the various uh, movements that are like kind of like coming from the ground up uh, uh, at this particular moment. Uh, and one particular question that, that I had for you uh, is when you think of, of foot soldiers and trailblazers uh, in the social justice movement, um, who are who are the people that that most come to mind for you? Um, well, I have lots of them. I mean, there, there there are lots and lots of them, I should say. But I'm particularly interested in people in my own discipline, you know, in the arts who are who are engaged in this work because I really really feel that the arts have such uh, a capacity to change people's hearts, not just their minds, but their mm -hmm. hearts. Um, and so I'm, I'm very aware of those people who are making that a conscious decision to incorporate the idea of um, you know, working in the social justice area, the, the intersection of art and, and activism. Um, I feel that those are the people who I most uh, click with in terms of what I've been doing with my career. Um, and so I could, I mean, I want to just name a list of people. And All right. Then, you know, yes. and then, I mean, I just want to name these, I just want to call their names and then I can talk a little bit about, you know, my own personal right. scoring. And, but, you know, Lisa E. Harris in Houston, Antonio David Lyons, who bounces between LA, Atlanta, and South Africa. Uh, Universe's um, creators, Mildred Ruiz Sapp and Stephen Sapp, who are just, you know, incredibly good at doing what they do. Autumn Knight, who's now in New York, but is from Houston. Soul Rep Theater with Anika uh, McMillan Herod, Gwena Bennett, and Tana, mm -hmm. uh, Tanya Holloway. I mean, they're they're doing the work here in Dallas. Uh, Michelle Gibson, who is making sure that the the, the um, traditions of uh, New Orleans Black community are not lost. Um, Teresa Coleman Wash, who, as you all mentioned earlier, you know, she's doing amazing work over there at the Bishop Arts Theater with um, not just what she's putting on stage, but things like taking responsibility to address the need for seniors to be um, uh, entertained and, and going out to the senior centers to do that during COVID so that they will not feel isolated. You know, those, right. that kind of work. 
Rennie Harris with um, Rennie Harris All Inspiring Works, which is uh, in Philadelphia. I mean, there are these artists who are who truly understand Rick Lowe in 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 Houston. In Houston, Rose House, Row Houses. I mean, these are artists who truly understand the power of creativity and the arts to move people into action. And um, so I, you know, I feel as though many people don't quite get that. I mean, you know, they, they confuse the idea of doing something that has a political message in it with using the medium to move people from one spot to another as far as their political consciousness is concerned. And, um, you know, I was, you know, lucky to have been mentored by Elizabeth Catlett who fully understood that power. Um, she, in the early years of her, her career was a part of a printmaking workshop in Mexico. Um, she and her husband both um, and those artists who were in that workshop came together specifically to create images that they felt would move the masses because the majority of the people at the time in Mexico City uh, uh, that quote made up the masses were illiterate. So they wanted to create imagery that would help them understand, you know, the, the power that they would have if they could organize and, and, you know, speak as one voice. So, you know, I had her as a mentor to understand the way in which you can use visual art to um, move people from one mindset to another. Um, and then, you know, I think about people like Stephanie McKee, who is carrying on the tradition of Junebug um, Theater in New Orleans. Um, uh, we've had a long history of theater being at the forefront of the um, idea of getting people's minds wrapped around, you know, liberation and, and um, moving towards uh, um, uh, power. Uh, the Negro Ensemble with Douglas Turner Ward. I mean, that was, that, that's who I grew up on. You know, that's, that's the theater I grew up going to see from Philadelphia. We would go and uh, see their productions every time they ran them. Before they would go to New York, they would they would run a a, a play down in Philadelphia. So you know, so the, there are artists who have been who've known that they needed to be doing this and have been doing this um, for generations, really. And I think that's the that's the tradition that I would like to think I fit in. Um, and I mean, layer on that. My day jobs have always been in that arena as well, you know, in terms of my arts administration life has also been in that in that realm of trying to move people from um, one mindset to another. Uh, Black right. people, I should say, particularly, you know, I've, I've moved all kinds of people, but I'm particularly interested in moving my own people. From, right. uh, I, I would actually like to touch on that for uh, a brief moment, um, because as I said earlier, uh, you are certainly uh, one of uh, one of my mentors, so I cherish so much. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, your time at South Dallas Cultural Center, but specifically the creation of uh, of the Diaspora Performing Arts uh, Commissioning Project, and what was the genesis of that, and the need of that, and the purpose of that, and then the overall. Tra trajectory of like the impact of that of the commissioning project. Well, I mean that project is was an example of how I feel you can uh, create opportunities for the work to get done um, using the resources that a city brings to you know to the table. In my case, I was running a center that had money to do programming, and my interest was in creating original works from Dallas Black artists um, and supporting those artists through the process of that work. Uh, now, I recognize that for most theater artists in mm -hmm. Dallas, um, what I saw as one of the, the, the greatest impediments to them getting their work on stage in a, in a condition that was really stage ready right. was money. You know, that, that there was not money and time, you know, that, that both things were in very short supply in Dallas. And so I felt as though the, the biggest contribution that I could make would be to create a program where I could get uh, artists contracted to do, to create work. And sometimes that work got put on the stage in the South Dallas Cultural Center and sometimes it didn't, but you know, we won't. 
I'm no longer employed at the city, so I don't have to worry <laughs> about the fact that that wasn't supposed to happen. But my feeling was that, you know, I was interested in supporting the creative process because I knew how important it was for, for artists to have the time and the money to develop a piece and then to put it on stage production ready. And part of that came from me being um, a part of the National Performance Network. And of course, you know, the, the National Performance Network's primary goal was to support artists and the creation of work. And with their creation fund, that was one of the things that they did, you know. So I felt like on a local level, we could certainly support our artists in a much more thorough way than we had been, which was, you don't just say, okay, well, you can come in and use the stage, you know, well, big deal. You know, if you're not willing to invest in their creative process, then what are you really doing for these artists? And that was what the, that was why I created the diaspora. And I wanted it to be diaspora because I was not only interested in African Americans. Mm -hmm. I was also interested in the Caribbeans and South American, Black South Americans, Africans, who anybody who was doing that kind of work here in Dallas that, that needed that kind of support. It was an incredibly uh, meaningful and important um, it had such an amazing impact on my life because I remember uh, when you were like, hey, I want you to continue working on this on this play and here's $2,500 to get you started. And I remember going like, okay, that's <laughs> 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 never happened before. Then we came <laughs> up with real money. Then we I got real money. money involved, you know? right. But yeah. before we wrap, before we wrap, real quick, I just want to have just a brief moment to talk about like your um, your perspective on on how movement, how the um, the social justice, how social justice movements uh, or have changed and evolved uh, over time, and what do you believe is is uh, um, how do you feel about the change in positive and negative ways, possibly? Well, I mean, I feel as though the social justice movements have morphed a bit, but I don't think they've changed dramatically as much as people might think. Um, you know, the, the biggest change is that I'm, I was concerned early on about the organizing element that was mm -hmm. so critical to, to success of those movements. But I see that now that, you know, these mm -hmm. groups are organizing, they are beginning to understand the power of unity. Um, and so, you know, I have to remember that my generation that's now bitching and moaning about what these young people aren't doing. Mm -hmm. My parents were bitching and moaning about what we were. Doing, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, and their parents before them, you know, so right. it's, it's, it's an evolution that we have to understand. It, you know, it's all about the time. And, and these, these young people are responding to the times and they're responding to the times in a way that is authentic to their experience. Right. And so I am, I am not the one to say, oh, you should be doing this. You know, it's like, no, you do what works for you and I will support that in whatever way I can by sharing with you what I think I might be able to offer as far as help in that regard. Hello, thank you. <laughs> I just oh, threw that in there. <laughs> well, thank you again, Vicky, for this time. And and of course, uh, again, thank, thank you to Regina Taylor for making all of this possible. Absolutely. And well, I can't wait till this pandemic thing is over so we can all see each yeah, other. Get back, to, get back to what we do. Right. And talking shit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and talking shit. Well, thank you again. You're welcome. All right.